In this quick video, I'm going to demonstrate that uh, home-built digital scope from the kit. Show what it can and what it can't do. And it does more than I first thought it did. Um, not a bad little unit for certain applications, but it's very limited because it only has a 200 kilohertz bandwidth. Let's uh, run some test signals through it. Okay, I figure what we'll do is we'll go through some of the, uh, the, the features of the scope and uh, I'll show you what, what some of the things it can do and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at some waveforms. So right now I'm just looking at a, an or, a standard audio waveform coming from my audio generator. If I press the volt division, I can adjust my display up and down. Press volt division again, I can now change the gain on it. I'm on 10 volt scale now, 10 volts per division, so I'm sending approximately 20 volts here. This is from my generator. And if I press sec division, I can now change my time base trigger, I can set it to auto, I can set it to normal, or I can set it to single. I'm in hold mode now, so it's OK to go back to, to running. There's a few other uh, things we can do on this thing. For example, to adjust my vertical position, if I set my input to ground and I press and hold the V division button for three seconds, this will center to the display. If I press and hold the OK key for uh, about three seconds, this will turn on the measurements. So now, it's showing me that my frequency coming in is 403 hertz so it'll do uh, countings it'll, it'll count it it's a pretty much a 50 50 duty cycle here's my v max 9.73 volts and minus 8.51 volts so it's got all my measurements including my vrms so this can be used as a measurement tool as well and it's showing me my peak to peak voltage and my rms and if i adjust the voltage down So this is actually quite a useful little device. More so than I first thought when I first put this thing together. I was looking at it more of, it's, this is a toy. It, it only has, uh, what, 200, 200 kilohertz of uh, bandwidth? Something like that, yeah, 200 kilohertz of bandwidth. Uh, one mega samples per second. It can uh, take a maximum input of 50 volts peak to peak. That's with a one times probe. Of course, a 10 times probe, you can extend that to 500 volts peak to peak. Input impedance is one mega ohm. It's got a resolution of 12 bits and the, the record length is 1024 points. Some of the other features that we've got on here is um, there's a fast adjustment. If you uh, toggle, if you short press of the adjust button here, this will go from slow to fast mode, you see? So now I'm in slow mode adjustment, and now I'm in fast mode adjustment. And what I'm doing is I'm scrolling across the, the waveform here. So I can look at uh, if it was a, a longer waveform that was not, that was beyond what was displayed, I could, I could freeze it and then examine the waveform. Let's see how the frequency works on this. Three kilohertz.
30, 38 kilohertz. See, if, I, if I've got the sample too low, it won't read the right frequency, so I actually have to turn up the time base. And here's 38 kilohertz, and it's about what it's at now. And the next one should be, I think this is going to be beyond its capabilities. Yeah, because it's, it's 200 kilohertz maximum. If I drop this down to less than 200 kilohertz, I should be able to Should be able to get a reading there. Let's turn it up and see what happens. Okay, we're gonna hit 200 here, and it should the wheels should fall off when I get past 200. Oh, it's still going. How high will it go? Let's find out how high it goes before the wheels fall off. Looks like the wheels are starting to fall off there. It's not not tracking because I'm beyond the maximum uh, sample frequency. So if I bring it down to under 200 kilohertz again, you can see that the samples here are a little better, but uh, still we're, we're, we're pushing the maximum frequency that this thing can do. And as I go beyond Oops, I'm going the wrong way. If I go up, if I go beyond 200, all bets are off. Let's just get it. There we go. So it is limited to 200 kilohertz. And there we go. So now we're back to our standard sine wave. So let's uh, look at some other signals on this thing. Now we know that this is not going to, uh, you're not going to be looking at video on this thing because it's got a 200 kilohertz bandwidth. But we can certainly look at audio on this thing. If I want to center that display again, if I just ground, hit the switch to ground and I hold the V division button. It will, it will center everything and then I can center my waveform, but now I've got my reference. Okay, so we're looking at audio here. And it's telling me my VRMS, my peak waveform. If I turn up the volume, it's telling me I'm going over on the display here for, for that level. I don't want to play that for more than a few seconds because I don't want to get uh, popped with uh, copyright. Okay, so that's audio. Let's uh, see what some of the other things that we can, can do with this thing. Now, one thing that someone is going to ask me, and I'm just going to show you that the answer is no. You cannot look at the RF for your video heads to align the heads with this scope. It does not have the bandwidth. What we're looking at there is the RF test point from this VCR. And I've got a tape playing. I better turn it down before they hear the sound from Jurassic Park. Now first of all it does not have an uh, external trigger which is part of the problem because to, to, to line a, a VCR you need an external trigger. That's part of the problem, but the big problem is it just doesn't have enough bandwidth. So if I hook up my other scope, my real scope, and hook up channel 1 to the RF test point, and hook up channel 2, now this is my other, my cheap, my cheap DSO, but you know, my cheap DSO will do this, as I'll show you. So here's my other scope. Okay, I'm triggered off of channel two. 
And if I adjust the line, or this, I'm not gonna tweak the guide. I guess I could screw with the guides on this, but if I just adjust my tracking, you'll see that the waveform will change. As I bring the tracking closer to being good. And if I tweak the guides, you'll see that the waveform in fact does change. I'll turn the I'll turn the exit guide here slightly if I can. I don't know if I've got the right screwdriver for it here. But as you can see, I'm now misaligning the exit side guide. And as you can see, we can do tape path alignment on one of these cheap DSOs. When I say cheap, I mean a you know a couple hundred dollar DSO, not a twenty dollar kit. The little one here, this little thing, if you're tracing audio circuits in an audio amplifier, this will do the job. But um, it's really really limited. Just wanted to show you the, that very quickly. And uh, yeah, I've got some uh, for you guys concerned. Uh, no, I'm not selling out to Banggood or anybody else as I explained in some comments before uh, They asked me if I would like to Take on a few other projects. They asked me what I would like to build and they said come to the website And let us know if you'd like to do any of these projects And I said sure why not? I like building kits. I like showing them off and it's good to get people interested in the hobby so uh, they contacted me and asked me if I would show off some of their products, which I have. I'm not being paid by them, okay? I have been sent the products um, at no cost to me, and I build them on camera, and I show them off. But that's the extent of my relationship with uh, Banggood or anybody else. Um, I'm doing it more for exposure because I like to get some other clients to show off some nice things and I've got a few that have contacted me that uh, I'm hoping to uh, get into a working relationship where I can show off some some high-tech stuff like action cameras and projectors and all those things and then we can actually do some serious comparison of some uh, good product but uh, anyway that's the extent of that but again that little uh, that little uh, scope that little DSO that I, that I just showed you here for looking at audio waveforms, hey, if, if you're just tinkering around with radios and audio amplifiers, it's a cheap way that lets you look at your signal passing through audio. I'm going to put another. I'm going to put it back up again, and I'll show you some of the other cool things that can look at. You can look at when you're looking at audio. Okay, so when you're looking at an audio waveform or anything, if you slow down the the uh, trace, once you. Uh, it down below 50 milliseconds or slower and the trigger mode is set to auto the scope will automatically switch to rolling mode so if I go down to 50 milliseconds oops 50 milliseconds now it becomes a rolling scope so if you're looking at audio signals you can uh, put it into rolling mode and you can still freeze your waveform. This is a one shot, it triggers and then refreshes. And I can measure the actual voltage here in this in this mode. So as we go up higher in frequency. So it's good for measuring it's good for measuring audio signals. That's one thing it's good for. Let's see if we go down less than uh, 50 milliseconds. Now it becomes a rolling display. So obviously that's just giving you the average when you slow it down like that. But uh, it gives you that option that you can look at a rolling display if you'd prefer as opposed to 
look at the 20th century. So that's it. That's all I've got on this one. Any questions, throw them down in the comments and I'll see if I can answer it. But it's just a basic, basic little unit. It's great for, uh, as you can see, in rolling mode. With so much of what you say, I do think. Neat little toy. It's 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 got its uses. As I said, it's not uh, it's not perfect, but for what it costs, you know, it's a uh, a neat little unit to have on your test bench. And uh, I find for looking at, and probably the only thing I haven't been using this thing for is when I have to deal with the foil capacitors, as I. I think I showed you that in the last video, but we'll we'll end this one just going through that one more time. So looking at foil capacitors, okay, when I'm looking at foil capacitors, if I reverse the probe, we'll look at the level here. And I've got this thing turned up to the most sensitive, which is five millivolts. If I reverse and now you notice that the level has gone down to to nothing right so this is the the foil the, the negative is on the foil right so this is this is the foil side here if I reverse the probe and put the positive terminal on the foil side now we see a bit of a signal because the capacitor itself is acting as an antenna so when I bring my hand near it I'm picking up induction but when I reverse the probes I got nothing that is probably the most useful feature of this little scope that I can think of because it's way easier to see it on this than it is on my other DSO right as you can see here's our, our foil is on this side because if I reverse the probe here there's our signal so that's telling me that this side here because the, the outside foil is connected to this probe here and it's picking up interference so that's probably the most use of this little unit and that is what I'm going to use this for when I'm servicing vintage radios this thing will be part of my test equipment for actually identifying the polarity of those capacitors yes and I know you can do it you can do the same thing you can hook it up to your amplifier and connect it and you'll hear a hum on one side and you won't on the other you can do it that way too anyway that's uh, the little uh, do-it-yourself scope kit we'll catch you another one real soon